Amen. Well, good morning, family. Welcome once again. And uh, we're here again to talk about the Word. And we do know this, <coughs> because of this virus, things have closed, churches have closed, and a lot of things have closed. But the, the importance is, in all of this, and above all of this, is our relationship with God, the Holy Spirit. And that's, that's the key to this walk here. If our focus, yes, we know these natural circumstances are happening, but uh, there is a spiritual law that's, 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 that's a governance and a power and authority over all things that are happening around us right now, even in the church and these circumstances, the way things are going. But uh, today's message is a, uh, it's a message of encouragement to everybody and uh, to ourselves here as a family. And my message today is to keep running the race. Keep, keep pressing forward, keep moving forward. It's very, very important that we don't stumble in a way that we fall away from the faith because of these, um, ex, uh, these things that are happening around us, the sicknesses and everything else that is happening around us. And it's, and it's very, very important that, that we build that relationship with the Holy Spirit and we keep running this race. We keep on that road. We keep on that highway. Because as many downfalls will come off the highway or off this road, if I can say it like that, through the enemy. The enemy will throw everything that he can so we don't end up finishing the race. So we need to run this race in the spirit with a relationship with the Word, the Holy Ghost, with Jesus. Amen? So I want to start with Zechariah 4.6. It says this, Power, but by my spirit. So this race, and this move of God, which is always has been, Ever since the cross, when Jesus said, I'll send you the Holy Ghost. So when does our race start with the Holy Spirit, and when does it end? Well, it'll never end, but my point is today, the starting line to me, I just want to put it in this context, the starting line was when we give our hearts to Jesus, and in this Day of Atonement, the finishing of that race in that time frame, where the enemy, he will work in that area as well to try and pull us off this road or distract us. Even through family, he'll do whatever he can to stop us running this race. And the main thing is to receive our prize as sons, um, one with the Father, or this oneness where we come into this realm, into this presence of God, and back into the bosom, back into our beginnings. And it's, the, and it's the working of the Holy Spirit now to bring us through when we get saved, the working of the Holy Ghost to bring us through this pattern that God has already set before us. Um, Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles, trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the finished work, or Tabernacles proper. But we all, all know that the Feast of Tabernacles, these feasts, all point back to Jesus Christ, our character. So out of him, we can say it like this, out of Jesus came all the functions and the operations of his spirit now, working in Passover, working in Pentecost, and working in the Feast of Tabernacles, Trumpets, and the Day of Atonement. In saying that, when we give our hearts to God, or to Jesus, th this is my point of this race, is that our race begins. And there is a cut-off point, the crossover period here. But we will continually working for eternity, that's right, in Christ, in the Lamb, with the Holy Spirit. But my point is, is the, the working of the enemy in this boundary here. The world is out there, it's an open slather. But once we give our hearts to Christ, our race begins. And we know when Jesus came, um, he, he, he done what he done, and he talked as a young man in the temple and all that, but I, I, I was feeling and I was praying about it, that his race had not began yet. His race to me began when he was baptized by John the Baptist in the wilderness, and when the Holy Spirit came upon him, and the voice of the Father said, This is my beloved Son. And then that, at that key point, because the anointing was on Jesus, it wasn't on him back then. He then, when he came out in the power of the Spirit, began his race that was set before us. And it's a race that he's already accomplished and finished, and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. To me, on the cross, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but on the cross when Jesus said, it is finished. He bowed his head, it is finished, and he gave up his ghost. To me, he finished the work here. Yes, he finished everything of the will of the Father. He walked it out from Gethsemane. He'd done everything there. 
It was all the will of the Father, what had to happen. But he did walk out the feast as well. So here, when it had finished, victory happened on the cross. <coughs> victory happened on the cross. It is finished. He bowed his head. It's accomplished. It's all done. So to me, I'm looking at this time frame here, that line, and he bowed his head and gave up his ghost. He had crossed over. He's gone back to this point and seated with the Father at the throne of God, at the right hand of the Father. We know now the Father of the invisible realm is our, our point in this race. It's, it's to where we're going to receive our prize. You don't receive your prize in the race. You receive your prize when you cross over the race. Always in a natural, natural race, as we know, when we run around and, and we win the race, we, you don't run with the gold medal when you start off the race. You've got to win the race to receive your prize. So too in this race here, in this move here, we don't receive our prize until we cross over. Amen? So in the working of the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost it's a relationship in this race that we need to connect with. This race is a race of the Spirit. Amen? It's up in the spirit. Because according to Galatians there, 5, that we need to uh, walk in the spirit, live in the spirit. And I'll, I'll read that shortly. But here, we can't run this race in the flesh. That's, that will not accomplish anything. Because it's, it's quite clear if we are not led by the Spirit of God, we cannot finish this race. So it's important in this race, when we give our hearts to God, the Holy Spirit also, He enters now. So He sets us up, He sets us up for this race. He gets us in position. And all before us, to the finish line, there's going to be obstacles in our way. And I always look at the, the hurdlers in the race. They've got to run in, in their mind, in their running. It's just not just a natural running. They're counting their steps. There's, there's, there's been teaching in their running, in their, in their exercise, and everything has to be down to pattern. So the pattern now, up in the spirit, has been set by Jesus. So too, as we begin to run this race and take our first steps as babies, we take our first steps in this race. Yes, there's going to be hurdles. The hurdles will be obstacles. On the side of this road, if I can say on the side of this road, it points back down to, to the flesh. This is where the enemy works here to try and derail us off this race or trying to disconnect our relationship with the Holy Spirit in this race. And he'll throw everything that he can at us to stop us finishing this race or going through the process or Passover. Some may start the race and because of the, the connection here with the enemy still still moving about and doing his things here, some still fall back the other side. Some move on and some move on from here. Now we've come up into this Feast of Trumpets and this Day of Atonement. The enemy now is, is at his ends <laughs> because he's no, he knows that there's going to be a remnant that's going to cross over at the finish line here. Amen. In saying that, let's just read this bit here 1st Corinthians 124 says this know you not that they which run the race run all but one receiveth the prize so run that ye may obtain so we, we do want the as sons we do want our crown We do want our crown. We do want the glorified body. We, do, we want to have the mind of Christ. We, uh, we, we declare that. We want all the functions of the, of the Father passing through us. So we know at the finish line that we're going to receive this prize. But in doing so, in doing so, the enemy does not want us once again to go this far, so to speak. So this is why our walk in the spirit, 
our spirit man, we fight with the flesh, flesh with the spirit. So that's, that's where the tug of war is in this race, to try and distract us. Amen. So let's, let's read that one more. So what are we after in this race? Once again, we, become, we want to become sons as overcomers to take our positions in the Father, in this invisible realm. Angels are not sent to be a part of this race, so to speak. It's us to become sons as matured sons in this race. In this race, as I said, matured sons, we mature as babes, as milk, amen, bread, then we come into the meat of the word. So this race is a race of maturity. We get saved, we got milk, mm, we drink milk. So then we got bread. Huh? And then we come up to the meat of the word. So that's to me, that's telling me, through the Holy Spirit, we he, he dishes out the milk, the bread, and the meat. He's maturing us, and we walk in this understanding to fulfill this race. There's no use stopping off at, at just milk and bread. We've got to go the whole shebang lot to finish this race. Amen? So really important, once again, to build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because he, Jesus said, I'll send you the comforter, and he'll lead you into all truth. So the comforter here being the Holy Ghost and he will need not, not leave us orphans in this race or fatherless. So here he will not leave you alone. Be comforted in that. He will not leave us alone in this race. Even though the, the pressures of the world and the lust of the flesh is happening in our life, he will not leave us alone in this race. If we stumble, call out for help in this race. Many it, many in the hurdles, when they jump the hurdles, they hit their knees, however, they take a tumble, and yet they know in, them, in, them, in themselves they've been taught to f at least try and finish the race. Some of them limp across the line and that, but they still got up and made the race, whether they came last or not. And, and in saying that, we all cross over at the one given time. Amen? So in your stumbling now, the Holy Spirit is there to pick you up and to help you to run this race and walk it out. We must go through this feast of Passover, Pentecost, and the feast of trumpets and this day of atonement, the day of separation and change. Amen? So also here, we talked about receiving the crown of life. Now there's a lot that can be said in all of this. Because of the time frame we're in as well, we're just going to Put some nuggets out there. So to receive this is this is something that's waiting for us, so to speak, at the, the crossover period, at the end of the line. As I said before, there, there's a gold medal waiting for us when we get into the race. We all, all who line up in this race know if you win this race, you're the only one that's going to get that gold medal. You can get a silver and bronze. Amen. Or you can get a hundredfold. Gold, gold in this realm here speaks of character. So in the process of moving through this race and going forward, he wants to produce gold. He wants to produce the character. Amen? Excuse me. So, in saying that, we're talking about character change. So we know the working of the Holy Spirit when we get saved, the, 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 the working of the Spirit of God in us then begins to change and get out our bad fruit, our old lifestyle. <coughs> we try and, <coughs> try and move, <coughs> excuse me, try and move and help us fight or understand this fight we're having with the enemy that's moving in and through our flesh, through our lust. And through everything in this area here, the enemy, like I said before, <coughs> he don't want you to even start the race. But when you do, that's, that's one thing out of the road on his part. Because the Holy Spirit now, when you give your life to him, you step across, you're beginning to start the race. The enemy does not want you to do that. So in this area here, <laughs> 
this moving of this race now, he wants to, like I said before, milk, bread, meat. It's, to me, it's, it's a part of the character change. The milk changes, so it does our character to eat bread. Eating bread, it changes the character to eat meat. So we can see here now, there's a process, and that's the working of the Holy Spirit behind that area there right now. Praise God for that. So in saying that, in crossing over and running this race also, through our obstacles, through our ups and downs, through the valleys, through the tormentors, through what all the enemy is spewing out out of us, we must keep in our mind, in our spirit, looking ahead and let the Holy Ghost move and take care of the rest in this race here. Keep focus on what God has set before you. Because that's, that's where the Holy Spirit wants us to be focused. Focused in on the finished work. Amen? In saying that, to the overcomers, those who go through this process and run this race, finish the cross here and cross over and come into this area, these overcomers have the rights then to eat of the tree of life. And we know the tree of life Tree of life points to Jesus. Points to Jesus, who's a character. So to eat of the tree of life and to get to that point, once again, it comes back to this relationship with the Holy Spirit in this race. Amen. So in saying that, once again, church, family, we we got to start somewhere. We can never enter if we don't come out of darkness, this race. If we're still in darkness and going back to darkness and continually going dark, back into darkness, we'll never, ever start this race. <clears throat> in saying that, I know there's a, there's a great outpouring coming of the Holy Ghost. Because I did say before, that we'll all finish this race at the same point of time, the finish line. And understand that the great cloud of witnesses that surround us, that encompass us right now, can I say it like this? I'll just put it like this way. They're waiting as well <coughs> for the rest of us to catch up as well where we cross over at the one given time. No one has gone ahead there, there, there's, there's, a, there's a waiting position in the spirit where they're waiting for us to finish the race through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we'll get to that point in scripture uh, shortly. Another thing is receiving revelation of Jesus or the unveiling of Jesus and the unveiling of the word which is spirit which is spirit. So this is why when we walk in the spirit, we live in the spirit, we eat in the spirit, well, it's, there's an unveiling in the spirit of the word himself, of this character himself, of Jesus Christ himself. So the revelation or the unveiling, apocalypto or the removal of the veil, will only get it up in this realm of the spirit. We will not get it in the flesh. Walking in the flesh and doing our normal things here, revelation comes into our spirit. So we need, it, it's just, a, just to summarize things as well like that, it's just to, we, we need all sorts of things, and this is just some of them from the Holy Spirit, as once again, this revelation. We need revelation also to run this race. Without revelation, well, it's, that's not good. We still need revelation to run this race. You heard a message to get you saved, and when you did get saved, that message started your race. Then you heard a, another message, the gift of tongues, the Holy Spirit moving, and the, and the language that comes forth then. So that's another step in this race. I can say it like that. Then we heard the this message of the Feast of Tabernacles, that's brought a people up onto the rooftops in this feast. So they've taken another step in this race. 
he once again we say that in this feast now, and we're talking about this day of atonement, this day of separation and change, this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he will bring a people in this race all to the finish line at one given time. And that great outpouring of the Holy Spirit will then bring a remnant across. No one will miss out through the working of the Holy Spirit here. Amen? So in saying that, we enter or we, or we cross over without spot, wrinkle or blemish. Once again, that comes back to the working of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> preparing us in this race. <coughs> preparing us in this race to start. We give our hearts to God and begins to move all sorts of things out of our, out of our area. It begins to cut off things from the flesh. Or now we begin to die to all things of the flesh. I used to drink before. I used to drink kegs. I used to drink gallons before. But once I gave my heart to Jesus, I don't do that anymore. So was, was there then, you've got to ask the question, was there then a cutoff point, no desire then to do that anymore? So that's, that's part of stepping out into this race. So that then the enemy, he can't work through that area to try and derail you if you were drinking all your life. So that's been cut off now. So he will look from another point of view from another angle to try and hook himself to something else to stop you moving on in this race. Like we said before, he'll do everything that he can to stop you from moving on. He's a family breaker. That's, that's the big thing with the, with the enemy. He's a family breaker. But the Holy Spirit, the Father, he's a homemaker. And things, the two different functions here. The one of Jesus, he brings the family back together. The one of the enemy, he will separate the family and destroy the family. So very, very important that we understand that this race is a very, very key thing to God and to the enemy as well. <coughs> so, and in saying that, there's an example here that I want to use with this working of the Holy Spirit. Um, Matthew 13 8. We've got down here. Matthew 13 8. It says here, I mean, there's a lot in it. It says that, but other fell in the good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. So a lot fall, fell by the wayside. Even the sower, when he was sowing, speaking his seed word the enemy was there and uh, the enemy is always close by so the enemy is always close by in this race watching seeing who's going to stumble or what he can he put there to make people stumble and he wants to kill off the seed word <coughs> he wants to kill off the seed word to those have been impregnated with this word because at the end of the race according to the word there some, some in this area in this race here have good ground so to get that good ground as we, we said once before to get good ground so that seed can go in there and produce a hundredfold well it begins with the relationship back here with the Holy Spirit to produce in this race good ground he, the holy working of the Holy Spirit in this race um, wants to go into our soil, so to speak, go into our soil and work in us, work in us and get all the stuff up to the surface so he can remove it or in our repentance he removes it to cut away, to separate us from that stuff. So the enemy cannot, through our ground, so to speak now, work his, his, um, his power or his witchcraft through that area there. Because once your ground is cleaned by the Holy Spirit, brought everything to the surface, everything has been removed, you become good ground. There's a, there's a lot in that. But running this race, the ground is being tilled by the Holy Spirit. 
being worked by the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of things in there that when, when, it gets, when it gets cut away, we don't like losing some things. But the Holy Spirit knows better than we do. So if we can just run this race the best we can in humility and in the other way and let the Spirit of God <coughs> do what he has to do internal inside us because this race is internal in us we will get to the end Jesus is already gone so the Holy Spirit he knows what to do in this race to get us past the finish line Philippians 3.14 says this I press towards the mark or the goal for the prize of the high calling or upwards <coughs> calling of God in Christ Jesus so the, our goal like we said or our prize that we said before or the high calling or the upward calling of God the calling if I can say it like this just want to make it simple as we can so we can all understand some things that the calling comes from the Father. <clears throat> so the Holy Spirit, how can I say that? The Holy Spirit now has been released or sent because Jesus said, I'll send you the Comforter. He's been sent to bring us through this race to finish the high calling to take our positions once again, to receive that prize once again. And in doing this, we need to die in the process to all these things. We need to die. And this is where the cross comes in as well. The cross plays its part there. Jesus, the Lamb of God, the blood, all that there. We will never get to it today. There, there is so much to say. But I just want to put some things, some points out there today, as like I said, encouragement to keep running this race. Don't, don't give up. Keep your eyes of your spirit focused and your ears of your spirit focused. Because he says in Scripture that clearly hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. He's clearly talking to us in this race, folks. And he's telling us what we need to do, what we need to repent of. He's showing us things in this race that's, that's, that the enemy has, has a grip on us and he wants to deal with it. He wants to remove these chains of bondages. Everything in this realm here is where the Holy Spirit wants to cut off everything that connects with the enemy. Amen. So we just let him do his work. I'll put out an example here uh, in Galatians. We've just read that before, but Galatians, <coughs> Galatians 5 verse 16 says this, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I've heard it said it's easier said than done, but, you know, and uh, a lot of people ask, how do you do it? Well, it's not a, it's a relationship, I want to put it back this way, it's a relationship between you and the Holy Spirit. That's where it starts. That's where it starts there. Because I didn't get saved for you. You didn't get saved for me. You got saved because you connected with the Holy Spirit, you connected with the Word, connected with Jesus and what he done on the cross, all that area there. So now this relationship comes with the Holy Ghost. Yes, we have the five-fold ministry working in this area for edifying the church and all doing all that there. So between all of that area there and the working of the Holy Ghost, he will get you and teach you how to hear and walk in the Spirit. There's, there's so much in that area as well. It'll come. We don't have to go to school to be taught to walk in the Spirit. It comes with the Holy Ghost. Here's what I've got. <coughs> it comes with the <coughs> it comes with the teaching of the Holy Spirit. We don't get a, a certificate. We don't go to college. 
It's all taught through him. Once more, these last day are people coming in. It will be all taught from the Holy Spirit in this race. Amen. So, saying that, talking about attacks, all of a sudden I want to start coughing. So then I say, walk in the spirit, you're not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So to walk in the spirit is walking in this race. That's, that's a big key. And that comes back to a relationship once again with the Holy Spirit him here. We can't walk this race, start this race, or run in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, without being connected in that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, see, the, the flesh lusts or fights, I'll, I'll put, I'll put, that's my word, fights against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. <coughs> So in saying, how will I put that? There's a battle, and will always will be, <coughs> till we cross over in this area. The flesh, it's like it's alive. And the working of the enemy through the flesh who's behind the battle starts the battle because he doesn't want you to finish the race. But your spirit <coughs> if he's not connected with the Holy Spirit in this race we're going to have complications. But knowing the Holy Spirit he'll never leave you or forsake you. So he's always there. And my encouragement is, don't give up this race. Keep walking out this race. Keep running this race. And it's, and it's not a race that I'm up here, someone's there, someone's here. <coughs> Excuse me. At the end of the day, the working of the Holy Spirit, he knows where everyone is. And at the last trump, the last trump, when we all cross over, I want to put it this way, when we all cross over, we all the working of the Spirit is going to bring us through at the one given time. It's not one's going to pop in here, and we're going to wait for some other, other, another five down here, or a couple up here, then we're waiting for, oh, so-and-so just got saved, now he's got to go through the whole process all over again. No, this working, I said this before, this working of the Holy Ghost is going to bring us through, because... There is a door, if I just put a door here, door, this porthole, this area here, when Jesus said it is finished, we cross over, and we said it before, he's not coming back to do all this over again. 